Hey, welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and I am back yet again for yet another Batman the Reanimated Series video with a look at Wave 2 straight from my local Target store. Managed to just hit that sweet spot where they were actually putting them on shelves. Look like a weirdo, of course, making off with all five of them. Now, specifically, we have figures from certain episodes, such as Blind as a Bat, which was a great episode. I appreciate it more as an adult. Back then, didn't care too much for it. It was always those Penguin episodes that were kind of like, yeah, but certainly makes for an interesting action figure. The sides of the box have some glowing red eyes Batman, which suits the episode of which it's based off of. The backside shows that we once again have a Wave 2 collect-to-build figure in the form of Lyle Bolton Lockup. Very excited to check him out, along with all four action figures, five technically with the Platinum Edition. And here's the barcode for the old Build-A-Batman for Wave 2. Now, the next figure gets his looks from movies such as Batman Mask of the Phantasm. That totally works. Episodes like Joker's Wild, which is great. And then even later on episodes, kind of, sort of, for TNBA's Mad Love. Of course, I'm talking about our trench coat Joker, which always makes for a very interesting Joker. Always like that look when he sported it in Batman the Animated Series. Uh, the accessories we'll talk about, of course, but here's the barcode for our trench coated Joker. Now, one of my favorite characters, can't say one of my favorite episodes, I think the character was a lot cooler than the episodes he started. He thought he was so smart, but never ended up rich, even after that toy deal. But Edward Nigma makes his Batman, the reanimated series debut as the Riddler. And I have to say, I'm very excited for this one. Couple extra hands, a very specific Riddler accessory. And of course, here's the barcode for Edward Nigma. Now for our next figure, I will say he doesn't have one specific look. It's basically his entirety of the Batman the Animated Series ensemble, but you get Police Commissioner James Gordon. Not one, but two Police Commissioner James Gordons, oddly enough. Interesting color scheme for the Platinum Edition. Where does it hail from, you say? Well, that's actually the Batman Adventures number 15 color scheme, which is right up my alley, just as Scarecrow was in the last wave. It's definitely a color scheme that you don't need if you have no idea what I am talking about. However, all you fellow Batman Adventures collectors, fans, she'll be right up your alley. It's a McFarlane Toys Platinum Edition, and much like the Scarecrow from Wave 1, you'll probably need it, if you need it. It's got no other different accessories, although I really wish that they would do something like that. Maybe a different head portrait for lockup, just to make it extra worth our while. You know what I'm saying? But in the meantime, this is going to be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the entirety of Wave 2 for the Target Store exclusive line, McFarlane's Batman, the reanimated series. Here we go. And while I got all you Fox Kids Saturday morning viewers here, I just want to say thanks so much for always checking out my YouTube vids. And if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Why? Well, we got old toys. We got new toys. We have daily news updates. Guarantee you'll find something here that you like. Like a whole bunch of Batman the Animated Series figures from the Kenner days to Mattel to now McFarlane. Go figure. But first and foremost, we will kick it off with Batman, specifically the blind as a bat, Batman. Now, for those unfamiliar, Dr. Leslie Tompkins creates this head device for old Bruce Wayne, linking his neuro-optics so he can see after he's blinded by an accident caused by the penguin. So for that alone, I like that it's episode specific. Now, he does come with very specific batterings. And when I did my news video, I said, those are not Batman the Animated Series batterings, and boy oh boy, did you guys let me have it. Well, yes, they are actually in the Blind is a Bad episode, and not only that, but they're in Joker's Wild as well. Very specific batterings, but they are in Batman the Animated Series. So yes, in reviewing several episodes, you were very right. So it takes back all those things I said about them not being accurate. You do get a couple extra hands in the sense of battering holding hands. The other hands that are attached are just item holding hands, which are great. 
but some fisted hands for Batman would definitely be appreciated. Now you do get an extra head portrait, which does harken back to blind as a bat. He pulls the cowl over the device on his head and he's got red eyes throughout the episode. The head portrait itself is good and bad from certain angles. They totally missed the color scheme of the skin. His color tone is definitely off. And I think that the black lip is just too pronounced. It makes it look weird. The red eyes, that's fine. That's the way to go. The skin tone is off. And it's also very much a hard act Batman if you wanted to go that route. Now, in terms of just having Batman Bruce Wayne with this harness on his head, yes, that looks fine. That looks cool. That is very much how it looks in the episode. It even has the wire, which I've tucked underneath his cape. The one thing about the wire, though, is that it heavily reminds me of when he gets stuck in the bat plane and he has to escape and he tears the wire, right? And then he, he's on his own in terms of stopping the penguin being blind. I like the color scheme on the helmet. I like the red eyes, but the wire, I really wish it would have been able to hook somewhere into his belt. That would have been kind of cool. Even if it's on the back, something you could slip the wire into, make it be a little bit longer, that's cool. I don't have the BTS DC Collectibles bat plane. Perhaps there's a port for that if you want to let me know. The cape actually fares a little bit better this time around. It feels like Wave 1, but it also feels very different. And I do have some thoughts on the cape. Because if you look at Batman and you have his cowl and then how the cape descends, there's not enough cape there. Now, I know this is specifically supposed to be the Batman with the ab crunch you could put him on Wave 1's Bat Cycle, which is all said and good. But it's missing the parts of the cape now, which I could just do without the ab crunch and just re-release the regular looking Batman. It also collects dust like no other. Again, the wire which attaches to the helmet, that's a nice touch. I'm glad it's there. That would have been weird if it wasn't, but somewhere to hook it in the belt would have been great. Now, in all honesty, this is a total pass of a figure or just a clearance figure because this mold is just not faring well anymore. It's really chewed up. The legs barely move, go really easy with the legs. I didn't have any problems, but they're very tough to move unless you heat them up. The ab crunch is barely non-existent and it really does chew up the plastic in the middle. And you don't want that. You don't want to have all this fun. Oh man, I got Batman in the animated series and then it's just not a very good figure in and of itself because of the deterioration of the mold or whatever they're using. This Batman is entirely too skinny. The cell shading fares a bit better this time around. But again, the color of the skin of Bruce Wayne is off. It's entirely too white. We'll say this. The head portrait is fine. I'll leave it alone. The rest of Batman itself needs a complete overhaul or reissue the first couple waves of Batman to do that. The legs are loose, the feet are loose. It's just not a good Batman figure, but the head portraits are doable, we'll say. Now, to really dive into this real fast, we have the Batman that was released from the Walmart four pack with Bullock and Joker and Harley Quinn. I have given this Batman the wave one head portrait which I think looks pretty good, a lot better than the one that it came with. And that is a very good looking Batman, the animated series, except for where his tights and the gray is. The other two, from wave one to now wave two, the color of the costume is off, the cape is off. It's a very skinny looking Batman. You have all that extra cell shading, which really doesn't do well. Although I will say wave two to wave one definitely fares better. This Batman the Animated Series version from the four pack looks a whole heck of a lot beefier, better, more spot on, more on model, where these two, yeah, that's hard act Batman. And then you have the blind as a bat Batman. Now, one thing I will say is that if you take that four pack Batman and if you wanna swap the hit portraits, while I did say the skin tone is definitely off, Yes, that is cool. I will say I totally dig that. Or again, if you want to have a precursor to the upcoming Wave 3's Hardak, you can just have Hardak Batman if you wanted to do that with the red eyes. So 
That's cool in and of itself. If you want to swap out head portraits, at least you know now that you can do that. But I'm telling you, if you're listening, McFarlane Toys, get rid or overhaul this Batman Wave 1, Wave 2 style, the body, everything else. It's just not working. Go back to the classic, get rid of the ab crunch. It'll fare a whole heck of a lot better, and it just looks a whole heck of a lot better. Now, to move on to a villain, Trench Coat Joker, which... In and of itself, sounds like an old Kenner figure. Now he just needs a pogo stick or a stick of dynamite or what have you. He comes with a ton of extra hands. Isn't that great? He's got a gun holding hand, while he even has a playing card holding hand. So many hands. Nothing to hold. <laughs> now he does come with these machine gun finger hands. That's not a bad touch, although it doesn't apply to a trench coat joker but it applies more to a suited, purple-suited, regular-looking Joker from Batman the Animated Series. Now, I have one of those original Jokers. The head portrait certainly works. You can swap out the hands. And yeah, that would be a robot machine gun hand Joker. So in that sense, it totally works, but it wouldn't have worked if I didn't have this Joker. You've given the trench coat Joker the wrong hands that doesn't apply to Batman in the animated series, whereas you could have given me playing cards, a laughing fish, an ice pick, something for him to hold. I will say, though, that for the most part, I do like this trench coat Joker. I think that he does look good, but you know I'm going to nitpick the heck out of it. Some of the paint on the spats is off. He does have peg holes, though, on the bottom. Now, in terms of the head portrait, I like the hat. He's got the wide brim. He has paint that goes across the band of the hat. That all looks good. It has some cell shading to it, but it's not overboard. But the smile with the extra black marks that are supposed to be the creases of his smile, they went too thick with it. We'll just say one crease would have been nice. Now it just becomes cumbersome and too much on his face. And it's just way too thick of lines for it to work that way. Also, I feel the same about the teeth. It's just way too thick for the teeth. Now, something to point out, like previous iterations of DC Collectibles Joker figures where you could remove the trench coat and swap the arms and just have a non-trench coated Joker, that's not going to happen here. Which, let's talk about the Joker mobile real fast, which was officially revealed at WonderCon. They kind of teased it a couple days before. They have multiple photos showing us the Joker, specifically this one, just kind of hanging out by his oversized Joker mobile, which... They then seat the Riddler in the Joker mobile to then show us that the Riddler fits. And that's the kind of thing that drives me up a wall. No pun intended. I know you're trying to show me figures that can sit in a car. I get it. But this is specifically Batman the Animated Series. And you're telling me in the episode of Joker's Wild, you can't find a Joker to sit in this car? Come on, you're going to put the Riddler in there? Well, let me point out something. I have several Jokers from Batman in the Animated Series, and I was wrong. I thought the coattails went down entirely too low, and you're never going to get a Joker sitting down flat. Yes, you can. You should be able to do that. A-OK -okay, number one. So I'm very stoked on that. And for those of you interested in the Joker mobile, it is available to pre-order on the Target app right now, so I'll put a link down in the description below. But in terms of this Joker, while he does have waist and his legs will kick out all the way and you can kind of sit him down, the trench coat will definitely keep you from sitting him in the Joker mobile. And another thing to point out was he wasn't wearing the trench coat when he sat in the Joker mobile during that episode. So it's kind of a mishigash of this, 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 and this. He fares pretty well in terms of the articulation being a more suited trench coated body. Overall, it's a pretty good Joker, we'll just say. However, I'll say this, something extra in the box, all those extra hands, you're not giving him any accessories. Give him stuff that's not deadly like a gun and whatnot. So many accessories to draw from. What are you doing? Why don't we have something to hold with this Joker? If you have a gun in your collection, that'll definitely work. This is the ideal Joker in my collection, so he'll definitely be seated in that Joker mobile. It's a pretty solid win of Jokers, I will say. And if you were wondering if you wanted to swap the head portraits between the two, yes, you can go more towards be a clown with the hat, even though it's a different hat. But you get the idea. You can swap the head portraits at your leisure, just that some of the white might be off. 
between the two. Moving on, we have Police Commissioner James Gordon, both in his brown BTAS look and the yellow and green ensemble from Batman Adventures number 15. And do keep in mind, whichever Commissioner Gordon you go with, it's the same exact Commissioner Gordon across the board, it's just different color schemes. Now, each one will come with several hands. You have a megaphone holding hand, gun holding hand sort of style, you have fisted hands, and then you have more of just an item holding hand. You do get the megaphone. That's a nice touch. That is something that Commissioner Gordon has. Specifically, let's say in I Am The Knights. Let's get a jazz man figure going. That would be awesome. But it's painted fairly well. It's just gray. The actual Batman the Animated Series Police Commissioner James Gordon in his brown attire with all the duds that you know, heavy as he is, he's just a pretty cool figure. I actually really like this. There's not much to complain about here. He is just a figure of police commissioner James Gordon. Now, whether or not you like the cell shading, it has it. But I like that this time around for wave two, they stayed away from the flesh. They didn't cell shade that. I think it fares a little bit better. It differentiates it more from the DC collectible styled versions. It's a lot more toyetic in that sense. I think that these move around a lot more. They are more plastic across the board, but for the most parts, they are a lot more sturdy. No part of me felt, except for the Batman, felt that they were going to break at any time, especially with Police Commissioner James Gordon. Now, like I said, regardless, if you go with the Batman Adventures version, which as you can clearly see, he has more of that yellowish, tannish trench coat, and then green shirt, green tie. Go figure. But I like this. As a big fan of Batman Adventures, this is right up my alley. This is the perfect type of a platinum edition. No one is probably going to know what I'm talking about outside of a handful of you. So high five to you peoples. But this is one you can just look at in the store and go, yeah, I don't need it. But he looks good with Batman. And if you have the comic book collection, yeah, you can put him in front of it if you so choose. Much like Scarecrow from Wave 1. This is the Batman Adventures Scarecrow. This is the Batman Adventures Police Commissioner Gordon. So again... Not something you absolutely need, although, as I'll reiterate, as an extra incentive, if you wanted to put extra parts and pieces for lockup, I wouldn't mind that because I'm getting, I know a lot of people out there are like, no, don't do that. But on the plus side, Commissioner Gordon does look really awesome when he's paired up with Detective Harvey Bullock, even though Harvey Bullock is way far gone in the cell shading because it's that four pack reissue. Again, if you have a gun for Commissioner Gordon, that might work. Although he's supposed to have more of a revolver gun. I wish they could have packed that in. It's in the collectibles section. Let's start seeing the guns. In terms of the height between Joker and, let's say, Alfred, Commissioner Gordon fares pretty well. Through and through, I get it. You can't put the guns just yet. Hopefully that'll change soon. But the style, the look, it screams Commissioner Gordon. And in that sense, he's a great figure. Which leaves us with Edward Nigma, the Riddler. The Riddler is my second favorite of the wave. We'll just say that because what's the Riddler? Now, he comes with a bunch of extra hands, fisted hands, item holding hands. You get the idea. He also comes with cane holding hands because he comes with his Riddler cane. Because, of course, he needs to have that. That is a very poignant accessory for the Riddler. Now, I'm going to tell you honestly, I love the character of the Riddler. The episodes he was in, not so much. From far away, dang, that's a good looking Riddler. But as soon as you get up close, the paint. The paint is where he suffers the worst, specifically in the head, the hats, the cell shading around the body, for the most part, is pretty good. It's on the sides, it's on the legs, not too heavy handed. They stayed away from the flesh again, but the hats, the brim of the hats, where the flesh meets the black shirt, it's all very goopy, it's very runny. I really wish I had more to choose from. This was the only Riddler on the shelf. So that may be something to look out for. If you get a chance to look between all the different Riddlers, make sure you get yourself a good looking one. Now, in terms of the articulation, he's going to be very minimal. He's very much a, we'll say, a, a very antiquated style of articulation at this point, especially in the legs. But I don't need him to kick out like this. In fact, I don't know why that's even there or why they thought that was a good idea to begin with. He has single jointed knees, single jointed elbows, and his little teeny tiny feet, which are a crack up and remind me of the TNBA Two-Face. But I digress. This is a really cool, really well-made 
Batman the Animated Series Riddler. And for that alone, I absolutely love this figure. Give him the Riddler cane. No, there's no button on there to activate that weird light system that caught the whole place on fire. That episode did not age very well. <laughs> Going back and watching that, I was like, this is kind of all over the place. It's very much Batman 66 with a more modernish tone of the Batman animated series, but it's okay for them. I, I get what they're trying to do. And just to nitpick the heck out of things, as I want to point out, Edward Nigma has more of a reddish hair. It's a more of a vibrant red than a brownish red. That would have been something maybe to look into, maybe paint it a little bit more correctly. But again, like I said, very happy with this Riddler because you have Robin, you have Batman, you have him just standing there looking cool as a John Glover would. Now, one thing is that when you first see Edward Nigma the Riddler, and it's very much that matte paint that they animated the mouth, that is a, a stance I wish that we could get to, especially with extra hands, something like that, but you can't do it. But I will tell you, for those of you who are fans of the old Game Boy game, Batman the Animated Series, which is just an awesome game, I will tell you that if you have never played it, do so. But in terms of the villains they've released thus far between Wave 1 and Wave 2, I know all the other characters that have come out years and years ago. We're just going off the first two reanimated waves. Scarecrow, Riddler, Joker, and Mr. Freeze. Can't beat that, that's a great lineup. Which brings us to the Build-A-Figure, which I will tell you is my definite fave of the wave. Lyle Bolton Lockup. That is an animated series lockup right here. In terms of accessories, he comes complete with his Billy Club, and that is perfect. He's seen using it several times in the episode Lockup, by which he's based off of. If you wanted to give him your own chain, something like that, he uses that as well. The figure of Lockup, they have done a perfect job at capturing the face portrait with the cell shading because it goes from looking like this to later in the episode, you see more pronounced nose and facial features which totally works. So it's a nice amalgamation of these two looks. In terms of the shoulder pads, they definitely nailed those. The body, everything looks like Batman the Animated Series, not TNBA because it has some wrinkles to it, which I totally appreciate, but everything that needs to be painted is painted. And again, they didn't go overboard with the cell shading. In terms of the cell shading, you really can't even see it when you're looking at it. You really have to look up close, but the gray shading on the boots is stellar. If they just left it that, I would have been totally happy. But they have it on the arms, the boots, the belts, specifically the belt buckle right there. That looks so good. This is the cell shading done beautifully. The head articulation, you'll get enough out of it. Left, right, up, down. The arms, that's where you'll have a little bit less articulation because of its big shoulder pads. It will inhibit you from moving them up past this right there. So it'll go up oh so high. He has single jointed elbows, which are ratcheted. So he's definitely a new style figure. He has some swivel in the elbow as well. The wrists, the waist. He has more of a rubberish diaper going this time, much like McFarlane toys usually do but it's not diaperish at all, let's be honest. He has single jointed knees, which are ratcheted. They will not spin at the knee, but then at the feet on the boots, you will have it go up, down, side to side, nice swivel there with peg holes on the bottom. This is really well done. This is a nice upgrade. Even though I liked Wave 1's Condiment King, I liked the character selection, there were some problems with him across the board, the paint, Everything about this figure works, except for a little blemish right there on his collar. But this is what I want to see. This is a great Build-A-Figure. And in terms of recreating scenes, kind of, sort of, you know, you, you need Lyle Bolton in his Arkham gear, but just use your imagination. Him escorting the Scarecrow to his doom, we'll just assume. Now, with Batman and Robin, I would say the scaling works a lot better this time around with Batman. He might be a little bit too big Robin is just off-scaled in general, but between Batman and Lockup, I'll say that looks fine. That looks pretty darn cool. And again, in terms of the Condiment King, the Condiment King was way too tall. His legs were all kinds of a sloppy mess. Nothing really allowed him to stand. In fact, doing this is by luck, we'll just say, but too tall. 
lockup fares so much better. So I am definitely looking forward to Wave 3's Bruce Wayne and to see where they take the line. So that will wrap it up for my look at the brand new Wave 2 of the McFarlane Toys Batman, the reanimated series Target Store exclusive line. Very happy to check this out. I'm a huge fan of Batman the Animated Series in general. TNBA, the Game Boy games, Batman Adventures. You ask me, I know it. I have no excuse for those batarangs, but I've learned my lesson. I've learned something. I've leveled up, we'll just say. This is getting back on the right track, I think, with Wave 2. Less cell shading, more poignant cell shading, staying away from the flesh tones, having one Platinum Edition, a Platinum Edition that really doesn't matter if you don't get it, especially even if you don't even know what I'm talking about, which again, I assume will be the majority of people. But the Build-A-Figure this time around fares a whole heck of a lot better. The Batman figures themselves need to be worked on. We need to overhaul of them, the Joker, the Riddler, Commissioner, all great figures, lockup included. So of course you've heard my thoughts, so now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk Batman, the reanimated series. And I'm gonna leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, here's to the future of the line. What build a figure would you like to see them do later for waves four, five, six, and then subsequently as far as they wanna go. And when they do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.